So electric field lines are pretty simple for us to draw. So here, let's say, for example, is our Van de Graaff generator. Van de Graaff, we said, was negatively charged because it pulls electrons from the Earth. At like that. The basic rule of electric field lines is we have to, and in general, with electric fields, you don't know if there's a field unless you test for it. Like if I just look at that Van de Graaff, if we're still standing up on the table, I would have no idea if there were a field coming from the Van de Graaff unless I put something else charged by it. So unless that charged balloon were there, I would have known the Van de Graaff was even charged. So we have to always, we're always about how we're going to test our electric field in these kinds of ways. And what, what, what would be a very convenient thing to use to test an electric field that we know a lot of information about already? A what? Electrometer? I don't know what it's called. Electroscope? Yeah. Well, that wouldn't tell us any numerical information, though, really. It's close, though. It's a good thought. Patrick Juris. I, I, I don't know Pat Juris' charge. What's something I may know the charge of that I could use to test the electric field? I don't know the balloon's charge. Close. Neutron has no charge, but you're closer. Proton, there you go. So we're going to use a proton to test electric field. Why a proton? Because someone picked proton many years ago. And really not so much even a proton, but we're going to use a positive charge to test the electric field. And so basically to draw these field lines, we do this. We take our positive charge, which I draw in red. I'm going to put it right there. If I put a proton right there, what would it do? If I just took it in my pocket, stuck it, it's going to attract. So I draw a line indicating that. What if I put a proton right there? Can I retract? What about over here? <laughs> no, no, it'll still attract. That's a good guess, though. So this is how you draw field lines. You ask yourself, literally, if I put a proton right in that spot, what would it do? And we're not talking about protons, just a random proton, not in the nucleus, not anywhere else, just a proton all by itself, what would it do? And it would, in this case, attract to the Van de Graaff. And now, folks, congratulations, you've drawn electric field lines. You now tell your parents when they ask you what you did today, you can tell them, I drew an electric field line instead of saying nothing. Or you can say what Isaac says every day, that he play, played with toys. Now, which toy? No one knows. Just played with toys. That's the basic idea. So always ask yourself, what would a proton do? Mm -hmm. WWPD. It's that simple. Okay? So let's do some other examples. Normally, it'll be drawn like this. So it'll just be like a negative charge sitting in space. And they'll say, okay, draw the electric field around this negative charge. So how would I draw an electric field around this negative charge? Good. Can you elaborate? Well, which way would the lines go in general? Good. So you're going to come towards. So we're going to do this. What's that? I'm sure it's relevant to them. Does this... Oh, talking about the shirt still? Yeah. What do you think would happen now if I take a twice as negative charge and made an electric field out of it? What, what would happen? The lines would become twice as big. No, good guess, though. Because really there's an infinite number of lines that, like, this isn't just one line. You would draw, like, through an infinite number of lines, kind of, in a sense. What, would, what, what else could we do, though? Besides making them bigger, you could do what? Make more. Make more of them. Make them... Really what we're doing, we're making them more dense, but we don't draw all the millions of little lines, so we're going to draw more of them to represent more density. How many, so if I, draw, if I drew four lines here, how many things I should draw here? Probably eight. Okay, I doubled the charge, so I'm going to double the number of lines touching that blue circle. And if I had three negative for the charge, I would draw it. 12 lines, and so on. Why would I draw 12? Oh, because I picked four here. If I had to pick three here, there would have been six there. Like there. There's no set rule. Cause we don't really know what this negative one is. It could be one coulomb. It could be 10 coulomb. We're just calling it one, whatever it is. So we're always going to pick three or four to be our smallest number of lines. Yes? No, and I'll show you why in a minute. Because once you have... Well, we rare, rarely will do a single charge. Usually we're going to do a set of charges together, and one line won't show the correct path. 
I knew you would ask that. Colleen, how are you doing? What did I draw for this? One positive charge. Awesome. Questions about that? Oh, they're going to get more interesting right now. Are you ready for this? Now, these two charges together are going to make an electric field. Rachel, what, what would you do with these? Well, they're, they're in the same field now. They're, they're in, interacting with each other. What do you mean? No, these, these, things are tied in, these things are tied in place. What would the field lines look like around those? So we would do something like this. How do you think the number of lines touching each circle should compare to each other? Equal, because this is a plus one, this is a minus one, so I should have three lines, one, two, three, one, two, three, touching each charge right now. Questions? Now, if I did that, whoa, what would change? Would they touch the blue one? No, right. So I would just have them going off in the space somewhere. So now, since this is twice as charged, it used to be one, two, three, four, five, six, touching that one, touching the blue one. Oh my gosh, that's really embarrassing. Sorry. That was, that was my mistake. I mean, good catch. I trusted you on purpose. Yeah. Again, the number of three or four is arbitrary. We picked it, but I don't really want you doing less than three on your smallest charge or more than four. Three, three and four are good numbers because they're multiples of two and three and six and eight and all those good things. So they're good numbers to use. Okay? And then we'll do other ones uh, moving forward that have like three or four charges in the grouping, and that's why you have to have so many lines going on there. What's recording? What? My drawing. And talking, so I can put it online for kids that are absent. It can hear me? And me? And you, yeah. Are you going to leave the soundtrack on there? I usually do. When I, when I put notes online. I, 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 put, I put a soundtrack on there. I know. I'm totally invading invade your privacy. What's that? Do you Often, yeah. Oh. So you We're going to be. Are you saving these for like further years? I put, I put them on YouTube usually, so if kids that are absent can see them. Oh, so next year is one Yeah. Sweet. I don't know. I don't really care. Um, okay, so now we need to quantify these fields. See, I don't tell you guys because then you start doing goofy things. <laughs> so here is the Earth. And we know there's a gravitational field acting from the Earth. What's the strength of the Earth's gra gravitational field? <laughs> Newtons per kilogram. So now, let's look at our Van der Graaff again. If you were a guessing person, what units would you put as the units of the electric field by the Van de Graaff. If knowing the Earth is, the gravitational field is 9.8 newtons per kilogram, what would the units of an electric field be, do you think? Nice. So a newton per coulomb. The field strength tells me how much force something that's affected by the field will feel. And so in the case of the Earth, I know that no matter what, something with mass is going to be affected by the Earth's gravitational field. And I know that for every kilogram of mass something has, it's going to feel 9.1 newtons of force. So if I throw a 2 kilogram mass towards the Earth, it's going to feel 19.6 newtons of force. If I throw a 10 kilogram mass towards the Earth, it's going to feel 98.1 newtons of force, and so on. Okay? The electric field is the same thing. So if this field, say, were 5 newtons per coulomb, and I threw a 1 coulomb charge towards the Van de Graaff, how much force would it feel? <coughs> Great. 
five, or whatever that little symbol is, five newtons. What if I threw a three Coulomb, this is tricky now, three Coulomb charge towards the Van de Graaff? Fifteen newtons, awesome. What about a six Coulomb charge? Thirty newtons of force, great. So that's all the electric field tells me, is how many newtons of force any particle would feel based on how many Coulombs it has. Now the electric field can change, and this is where it gets trickier than gravity. Gravitational field for us is really never going to change. We can't change the mass of the Earth, really. We can't change our distance from the Earth, really. And so we always feel 9.1 newtons per kilogram of the Earth's gravitational field. With electric fields, if I just move from here to here, the electric field is going to change quite dramatically. Right? And so this number changes a lot, and that's why these get a little bit trickier. And then we test with our little charges wherever we go. Yeah? Is the electric field like generally the same throughout like space? No. Greatly changes. All over? Yeah, well, it depends where the charged particles are. I mean, it's probably zero in the middle of space. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's going to be zero unless you're near like a star that has like eye plasma coming off it or something. To compute, it's a relatively simple process. E is the symbol for the electric field. And we just take, again, we're going to be testing the electric field where we are. So we're going to take our test charge, put it near the source, and measure the force it feels. And we end up doing this. We say the force the test charge feels divided by the charge that we tested with. What's wrong? This one? Oh, it's a Q. Sorry. So again, basically what I'm going to do, if I have my Van set up, I have a test charge. Let's just pretend I had a one Coulomb test charge on the end of this pen or whatever, and I put it near the Van and I would say, oh, that one Coulomb charge just felt five newtons of force. I would know that my electric field is five newtons per Coulomb. I come here, oh, now that one Coulomb charge only feels two newtons of force. So this distance away, electric field is two newtons per Coulomb. And so wherever you put your test charge, however much force it feels, you just divide those two numbers, force you feel over charge you tested with, and that gives you your electric field in newtons per coulomb. So it's going to be different everywhere you put that charge, depending on how far you, you are away from it, like that. We can take that one step further. And so what is our equation to find the electric force between two objects? E plus KQ1 and Q2. So we can do, good, so we can do KQ1, Q2 over the separation squared divided by, again, that test charge. So this bottom Q is the test charge, as well as one of these other two Qs also has to be one of the test charges, right? Because one charge is the test charge, one is the source charge from the Van de Graaff itself. And so I could cross off one of those Qs on top with the test charge, leaving me with just KQ over that separation squared. And that Q right here refers to the source charge. And so in this case, I could say something like, if I knew, I knew the Van de Graaff had a 10 Coulomb charge on it, and I was two meters from the Van de Graaff, I could figure out from this equation now, my like KQ over D squared, what my electric field is, just if I know the source charge, how far I am from it. 8.99. 8.99 times 10 to the 9th. Oh. So you can either do the F over Q, where this Q is your test charge, or you can do the KQ over D squared, where this Q is the source charge causing the field. And that's where a lot of the confusion comes into place, is keeping those two Qs straight in your brain. And so that's why I try to label them with pretty colors, to keep them straight for you. So 